There's been a lot of plugins that I've checked recently. I'm not going to name names, but the oversampling features or the anti-aliasing features are kind of buggy or they aren't working correctly. I wanted to test to make sure that the features that are in the plugin are actually doing what they say they are. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how to use a free software called Sonic Visualizer to load up some of these Science Suite files and convert them to spectrograms so you can visibly see if your plugins are aliasing without the need of buying any extra software. If you want the test file that I use in this video, you can download that in the description below. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to test your own plugins. So you're going to want to import in those test files that you can download in the description. So bring them into your DAW. Okay, this session is 44 kilohertz sample rate. So we're going to choose this one. If you have a 48 or 88 kilohertz sample rate session, you want to pick those. Just drop that in here. And here is our test file. Now all you need to do is add the plugin you want. So I'm going to demonstrate this using the clairvoyant amp suite. Okay, and we're going to test the heavy setting with no oversampling. And all we do is render this file down. So we're going to apply this plugin to this file. Make absolutely sure that when you're rendering this file down that you're not clipping the output file, meaning you might have to come in here and adjust the output level down so that when you render it, it doesn't clip. Okay, because otherwise you're gonna see all sorts of distortion, harmonics, and, and potentially aliasing artifacts. And that's not from the plugin, that's just from you clipping the file. Okay, so don't mess that up. So we're gonna render this down, channel settings, and then let's render it. Perfect, easy way to check for clipping is to see if this exceeded zero dB full scale, which it did not, so we're okay here. All right, so now we just have to import this file that we generated into Sonic Visualizer. So now that Sonic Visualizer is open, we're just gonna load that file and I'm just gonna choose this one just for an example and it should open it right up. So if you have multiple windows that automatically open up like this, you can close all these other ones, but this is the one that we're interested in. Now, if yours does not look like this, if it just looks like a regular waveform, what you have to do to change this to the spectrogram is just right click on this image, go to layer, and then add spectrogram. Okay, and then it's going to generate a spectrogram of that waveform. You can zoom in and out by using your mouse wheel, and then you can just click to move this around. You can change the color scheme of this spectrogram to anything you want. I like the green. You can also play with this window setting. This allows you to change the appearance of the spectrogram. Basically, the larger the window setting, the better the frequency resolution. But you're going to lose your time resolution. And the opposite is true with the lower number. So this is going to give us better base resolution at this higher window number. But if we go to the smaller one, we have better time resolution. So the band here gets wider in the base frequencies, but it looks a little bit crisper. You can increase this value. It cleans up the spectrogram. This value is oversampling. I find that just to increase the resolution and the clarity of the spectrogram, let's just go 8x. So this looks like a nice starting point. On this y-axis, this is the frequency, and this x-axis is time. And then the coloration tells you the intensity of that frequency. So if you see this dark color, that tells you that's very low intensity. So yellows and reds are going to be audible. Reds are the most audible. The way I generated these plots is by running a sine sweep from 20 hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz. And it just sounds like this. So on this bottom plot right here, this is that sine sweep that's run from 20 hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz, okay? So you can see all the frequencies with time. And it's very clean. This is what a perfect sine sweep looks like. All these other lines, okay? These are the output of this sine sweep being run through the clairvoyant plugin at the heavy guitar amp setting. What I'm looking at is what's called aliasing. Aliasing is essentially just this like 
non-musical, high-end sizzle and noise that's really, really harsh in most cases. It's never good to really have that in your music. There's several strategies plugin developers use to get rid of that, and that's exactly what I'm testing in this experiment I ran. So these different tracks are that sign sweep on a distorted guitar setting, with different amounts of oversampling. Oversampling is designed to remove aliasing from the signal. So if the oversampling is working, we should see a loss of some of these additional frequencies or these non-musical artifacts that are being generated when we run it through this plugin. So this top spectrogram is the sine sweep running through the clairvoyant amp sweep. This is with 2x oversampling, 4x, 8x, and then finally 16x. Here's our main sine sweep. And then we have all these additional harmonics. Okay, that's what gives distortion and sound. But what we don't want to see is these harmonics reflecting back down once it gets to the top at these highest frequencies, okay? All these lines that are reflecting back down at this angle, those are aliasing artifacts. If this was a perfect plugin, we'd see all these harmonics, but we wouldn't see any reflections coming back down. So this tells us that there are audible aliasing artifacts without any oversampling. So if we look at what frequency they occur at, they occur right here at the, at the highest frequencies, right? And this is all in the audible range. If we put it to 2x oversampling, when these harmonics are getting to their what's called Nyquist or half of the sampling rate, they get reflected, but then they, they go away. This is an effective oversampling algorithm, okay? So this tells us that that oversampling is being very beneficial because it's no longer reflecting back all these inharmonic frequencies back into our signal. Okay, they're getting chopped off. If we look at this section right here, this is getting cut off, whereas this continues on back down into our hearing range, right? This is like 10,000 hertz and below. Almost anyone can hear that. And the fact that this is red means we're definitely going to hear it. And we should see less of these little triangles and these cool patterns as we go down with higher and higher oversampling in general. Because the higher the oversampling, in theory, you have more room to get rid of these aliasing artifacts. That's an oversimplification of anti-aliasing, but that's all you really need to know for right now. So at 16x, it does a really good job of clearing out aliasing artifacts. And honestly, for most people, 4x is going to be almost completely transparent in terms of aliasing. The artifacts that are there are very, very quiet, and you're never going to hear them in a dense rock or metal mix. 2x is probably okay, but I wouldn't operate this plugin at 0x oversampling. I would always put it at 2x. You're getting a massive improvement in the quality of this plugin at 2x. This is a free and easy way for you to go and test your plugins. If you wanna download those test files, I have a link in the description to download all those different files so you can just load them into your DAW and start testing plugins. If you learned something today, be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know that this was a helpful video. And if you're new here, welcome. I drop new videos every single week to help you level up the quality of your music. If you want to be notified when I drop a new video, just hit that subscribe button and you'll be all set. My name is Bobby Balo. I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Rayton Productions, and I hope to see you in another video.